Hello, welcome to Aging Well in America. I'm Anne Marie Guattari, your host. Today we have with us some very special guests from the Family Center. There's a big event coming up in February for caregivers of seniors and the disabled, and this event will focus on how their needs can be met, as well as our aging loved ones who we care for. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to start with Debbie Liddell, who is the executive, executive director of the Family Center. The keynote speaker, Jill, welcome. Thank Jill you. Gaffner is an author and a certified dementia practitioner, and you're going to speak at the event. Same. And Suzanne, and give me your last name. Antonelli. I am Tonelli. <laughs> I should be able to say that. A financial, a certified financial planner who is also going to be um, at the at the event. So, Debbie, let's start with please um, a little bit of background about the Family Center. Sure. Fifteen years old now. Fifteen years old. The Family Center started in 2000, so it's our 15th anniversary. It was in October, and the chamber named us for excellence in nonprofit activities. We won that award last year in that's 2015. That's wonderful. So Congratulations. That's, thank you very much. And um, the Family Center really is a go-to resource. Um, we've done a lot of homework. So we want to help those that are in need, searching, to at least get some information, then, then they can continue the path of where they need to go. So if someone should call us for um, asking one of our experts, let's say maybe they need a therapist, we can give them a list of resources. If they're looking for senior providers, we can list those for them too. Mm -hmm. The members of our association of professionals that we've built over our 15 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. So when we first started, we were offering programs expanded into resources and now connecting with professional experts. Wonderful. And the Family Center started with really a focus on young children mm -hmm. and the family, um, school age children, and has since evolved to encompass the, the larger uh, family. Yes. T tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, we were birth, I would say, through college. Mm -hmm. We were doing the student transitions and trends in the community. So mm -hmm. it would be anything from autism on, um, to learning disabilities to depression issues, watching eating issues in children, mm -hmm. and the student transitions, transitions from kindergarten, middle school, high school to college. And um, then dealing with the empty nest syndrome. Mm -hmm. So our families aged with us from the birth through college and right. now they find themselves managing their careers. Yes. The kids have left home and then they may have their aging parents or another loved one that they're caring for. So we are from the beginning of life through the end of life. Wonderful. The full, really the full, the full focus, uh, yeah, focus. full circle. That's wonderful. And the event that's, um, that uh, we're going to have in February, on February 25th, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Assumption Cultural Center on Martyr Road in St. Clair Shores. It's called Taking Care While Giving Care, Making Informed Decisions While Caring for Loved Ones. So this is the third year mm -hmm. you've been uh, doing this, um, this event for seniors and caregivers. And uh, tell us a little bit about that, what somebody who attends that, and it is free, it is free. From five um, to there eight. is food and refreshments. Mm -hmm. um, Short Point Nursing is our sponsor for the event. Mm -hmm. And we're doing it in partnership with Assumption Cultural Center, Senior Expo, mm -hmm. Short Point Nursing, Marchiori Catering, and the Family Center. Nice. And that evening you'll come. It's an opportunity again. Um, how do I find an expert? How do I find a professional? Uh, maybe I'm dealing with the stigma of I don't really want people to know what's going on in my life. But this kind of makes it a comfortable social evening. I can have dinner. I can talk with other people who are maybe challenged by mm -hmm. these issues. Connect one-on-one -on -one with resource experts. And then there will be vendor booths around there from all different service providers. Okay. So we have about 100 people who attend that nice. annually. Yeah. And it's a good time of the year. Um, but again, it's that helping to give that resource and support that people really need. People walk away mm -hmm. really with um, a nice library of resources, as you said, as well as information, which we're going to hear about in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, Jill, you are um, a well-known author in the community, having written about your personal experience, and you're going to be the keynote speaker. I am. I'm, the I'm so excited about it. I have been to the events before, mm -hmm. and one of the things that people take away that you can't always touch is the emotional uh, stability of all the people together. Mm -hmm. that, that network event, and to sit with others who are 
experiencing like emotional roller coasters uh, is, is so powerful. So I I want to um, ask you a bit about what your um, keynote will be about, and then some of your background. But I want to hear from Suzanne for a moment because um, as a certified uh, financial planner, you also are involved in a lot of um, families' very personal decisions, um, and some of them may be as they're looking toward the, you know, some of the final decisions they'll make in their lives, right? Whether to sell a home and move, what to do with assets, how to pay for the care that they may need. So in some ways, um, the two of you really the three of you are all very well connected so I I just like to have a, a conversation if we can about how do we manage an aging parent who may be showing signs of dementia but we're not quite sure they have a home can't be left alone what what do you say to someone like that who by the way that was my personal experience with my mother a number of years ago she's now passed but my siblings and I had a lot of decisions to make, and we didn't always have the wonderful resources that uh, that all of you represent. And you don't, especially if you share uh, responsibilities, mm -hmm. you don't always have an agreement on the right path, mm -hmm. right? Like we don't know what's right, uh, and any given day um, things could change. Mm -hmm. So I think for Suzanne, you know, Suzanne comes through with the very logical. Mm -hmm plan that mm -hmm. families should follow rather than the emotional plan that many of us tend to follow and then we fall into mistakes. Uh, from, from my key point presentation, um, it's more of the caregiver's uh, ability to maintain proper mental health. Mm -hmm. So you can make decisions, mm -hmm. um, you know, such as mm -hmm. the finances, which are huge. When you speak yeah. of caregivers, are you mm -hmm. um, specifically referring to family members or not necessarily? Nope. There are 65 million people caring for someone right now, and that's not something we typically sign up for. Uh, it ends on our lap for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, you know, we have our parents, and if you follow your life, mm -hmm. uh, the, the set of life, it, it means you're your parents or or, um, or grandparents but in my case it was a husband and mm -hmm. we are only 32 years old so that certainly doesn't qualify for no. you know a senior by any means but it could be siblings and you know so it really it doesn't matter who it is caregiving is a tough job mm -hmm. and it's emotionally exhausting it's financially exhausting it can be and if can you be. don't know what you're doing right yeah, you could make some dangerous right. mistakes. Now, when the finances, however, are managed, that can certainly help alleviate some of the emotional stress. And you're going to talk about this as well at the at the February 25th event. Yeah, so we're gonna give us a preview. Well, it's pretty. It's an Ask the Experts panel discussion. So okay. we'll have myself as financial planner. I'll be leading the discussion, but we also have an estate planning attorney who specializes in Medicaid planning mm -hmm. and estate planning for the elderly mm -hmm. um, and making sure that they have an estate plan and there's somebody there to make decisions. Uh, we also have a realtor who's, who mm -hmm. specializes in what you can do to your home to make it more saleable if, if that's the right thing to do. Um, and if making changes to the house, if that will change mm -hmm. the value of it at sale. We have a gentleman who provides home health care mm -hmm. and somebody who's a long-term care specialist who can answer some of those questions. Great. But, you know, working with clients, it's not, the financial puts such a huge stress and strain. And if I can alleviate that um, and they can meet somebody like Jill or read her book, it, it can make such a world of difference in their lives. You mentioned uh, earlier when we were speaking that private duty home care is tax deductible. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. I was meeting with a new client yesterday and he didn't realize that, um, that it is a deductible expense if there's, certain conditions that are met which are fairly easy. What are some of those conditions? Um, it's the activities of daily living. Okay. If mm -hmm. you if you can't feed yourself or mm -hmm. clothe or bathe or things like that. And it's it's a fairly easy um, mark to meet. And mm -hmm. you just have some some proof in your taxes right. sure. in case you're ever audited. But. Sure. And any home care agency will likely have a plan of care that is um, that is um, provided to the family an assessment um, that and all of these can be given to 
the accountant to support the, this deduction if, it, if it's ever uh, needed. Yeah, and one of the, the major problems I've seen is a lot of CPAs aren't aware of it, which I Interesting. find amazing. So we have to educate. Again, uh, this is why we have a panel of experts, because we have to sometimes help educate our own professionals, right, sometimes. And that's what the Family Center does. Yes, that's mm -hmm. exactly Bring right. Us all together. I mean, there are a lot of doctors who don't understand what uh, some of the services sure. are that, uh, that we provide. I think it's also important that you get ahead of it. Mm -hmm. Many of us try backwards when we find ourselves in that situation, mm -hmm. and oftentimes it can be a day too late, a month too late, a year too late to get ahead of it and use your resources to come to say, I know what I'm probably likely heading towards. How can I plan in advance? So how do you, how do you um, advise somebody well, to get and ahead of it? For my subject material, I always say, if you have uh, a situation whereby you think that you would be heading in a, in a, a senior moment or a, a caregiver time, Take consideration, let's take dementia. Dementia is one of those areas that, you know, if you look at our aging population, in the next four to 10 years, we will have the largest aging population ever since the census. Maybe ever, 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 right? Well, the, the, here's a statistic that I've uh, memorized because it was so, um, so um, just uh, overpowering. Um, in Today, there are about 10,000 people turning um, 65 mm -hmm. a, day, a day, right? And 5.5 million of those people are older than 85. By the year 2050, mm -hmm. which is less than 35 years from now, mm -hmm. not that long, mm -hmm. um, 20 million people will be older than age 85. Mm -hmm. 20 million. So when you take that 5.5, and doesn't it seem everywhere you look, you see somebody who is elderly in that age group, and imagine that number, that 5.5, becoming 20. Well, and like, like I said, with the aging population and the baby boomers and so forth, in four to 10 years, we'll have that largest population of aging. And dementia, the average age for dementia is age 65. So when you're looking at where are we headed, and how can we get ahead of it? Some of the things I would suggest is start to noting memories, put them in a book, take a shoe box, and put gadgets, just little trinket gadgets. Maybe you'll never use this trinket box, but in the event that you ever do, you have a box of trinkets that your loved one really does cherish when they get to that point and they start uh, some dementia activity. So yeah, when you say like trinkets, that. you mean something that was meaningful in that person's yep. life. Absolutely. Um, what might be an yeah. example? What, what are some tricks that you've used? Okay, um, I, I wish I used. I'm a good example of what I wish I had back when I was working um, with my husband. But some things were, um, Bob had a lot of uh, war items from mm -hmm. his father who was in mm -hmm. World War II. He used to show those off through all those years of marriage. It never occurred to me that those would still be important at the mm -hmm. end. And let me tell you why. One of the areas within dementia that people struggle with is the fact that our human minds, we never use the capacity, we never lose the capacity to problem solve. Mm -hmm. So it's just the logic that gets a little mixed up. Mm -hmm. But the problem solving will be. So they may start, um, like Bob would undo the TV and undo the cable and rewire the telephone and you'd come in and things would just be all over, right? Because he, he, you'd try and, mm -hmm. and make things work. Had I had that trinket box, he could have sat for hours and gone through trinkets. And, and you don't think of that when you don't need something like that, but I would start collecting that. My grandfather, he collected glasses. He wore glasses all his life. Mm -hmm. He would have a pair of glasses like yours, mm -hmm. Anne-Marie that broke. Mm -hmm. He'd have arms, he'd have the frames, he might have a popped out lens or two, but he kept them in a box. Now, bless his soul, when he was, you know, giving things away, this was important to him, so I was left his trinket box. Aww. Isn't that sweet? Yeah. yeah. So they, it makes a difference, but mostly, the, and that makes sense for our patient and how we can help them, but for ourselves, for caregivers, mm -hmm. one thing I say is start a routine, a mm -hmm. healthy 
routine. It doesn't have to be long, it doesn't have to be intense, it just needs to be a healthy routine. And one of the things that we'll talk about during caregiving survival is how to build a healthy routine. Mm -hmm. and for yourself, not necessarily for, for the person. No, you're... for yourself. Okay. It's caregiver survival. And you have to remember, although our, our loved ones are so important and we use a lot of our resources, caregivers suffer from an assortment of guilt and emotions that we don't recognize our self-worth after a while because That's it's right. so focused on our patient. So what I talk about is you do have self-worth and your patient can't do it without you. So you That's have right. to make sure that your routine is healthy, That's consistent, right. and then we go through some ways that you can simply implement a daily yeah. program. Yeah, great. Uh, so yeah. giving them permission to take a break. Absolutely. Yeah. No. You know what? Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. We wait for permission to say, now it's time to take care of you. and, and yeah. So get when um, someone is looking to do that and they're being told, you have to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Are you doing your, you know, whatever it is you do. Do you go to yoga? Do you do? And often the answer might be, or the excuse. I don't have time. Well, aside from I don't have time, I can't afford it. So how can people find ways to afford things? Well, that, that's kind of a problem if we've gotten to the point and they don't have the, the assets. Yeah. And that's where you yeah. know, the family center can give them some resources. And really just going to see other family members or friends. And I think part of that caregiving is, is asking, caring for the caregivers, mm -hmm. is being willing to ask for help mm -hmm. and support from your family and friends. Mm -hmm. So if we're getting ahead of this emotionally, Planning the financial piece of it is really going to be important. How how do you um, well, I try recommend to, doing that? I try to head it off at the pass. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my clients are our age, mm -hmm. and then the, we're working with their parents as well. So I have generations of families. But it's, it's encouraging them, get your estate plan before you need it. Mm -hmm. um, make sure somebody is empowered to act and make decisions on your behalf. Uh, I see so many people scrambling, okay, I need this power of attorney for my mom, and they're downtown trying to get uh, conservancy and guardianship when a, a document prepared earlier would have, mm -hmm. would have done it. Mm -hmm. I see some of my older um, clients who, I don't need that, I don't want that, because they're thinking, well, then it's inevitable, I'll have dementia. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it could be a lot of things. Sure. It could simply be a car accident. For You'll need this for a few weeks. Everybody needs one. Mm -hmm. But make the decision yourself. Don't let the state make it for you. Mm -hmm. So while you're still able to be heard and understood and you can make your wishes known, make those decisions and get the documents. Because it's so stressful when you don't have them. Yeah. And expensive. It's yes. more expensive to get them afterwards okay. than it is to get them up front. Right. Can you give us a... Um, do you have a, um, an anecdotal a success story that you can share with us? I'm putting you on the spot. I should have Anecdotal been success story. Somebody who came to you perhaps and thought that they were in trouble financially and you were able to, through some guidance and planning, um, help them uh, to see that maybe they, they were able to... It's probably, it's probably a softer side of it, actually, mm -hmm. rather, because mm -hmm. um, it's a relationship, and sure. I know everything about my clients. Um, it was one client, her parents, well, her mom is still in long-term care and assisted living, okay. and it's been, gosh, since 2005. Mm -hmm. And she did worry about being able to afford it, and it, it was managing the assets to make it happen mm -hmm. um, and walking her through all the different steps. But the biggest thing was is that she didn't want to ask for professional help as far as caregiving. She thought she owed that to her parents. Uh, okay. And I had to sit her down and say, look, your mom and dad bought long-term care. The insurance policy. The insurance policy. Wonderful. Which gives you permission, which told you right. that they wanted you to ask for help right. and you shouldn't be doing this all by yourself. Wonderful. And talking with clients now who are our age or younger, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. get the long-term care, give your family permission to ask for help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a whole other. <laughs> Even if you can afford it, yeah, yeah, afford the care, but giving them permission and letting them yeah. know that you want it. That's to see that's it. a really good way to look at the policy. If they mm -hmm. had the foresight to buy the policy in advance, then they anticipated needing some help, and they didn't want their children to necessarily mm -hmm. be the ones to do the hands-on, yep. but maybe to manage it. Very interesting, mm -hmm. Debbie. The um, the family center. 
does a number of wonderful uh, programs mm -hmm. and events throughout the year. Just run down some of them. Oh, we'll do anything you'll see from academic issues mm -hmm. and helping families um, with their children and you know, reaching those milestones. We do um, learning disabilities. We try to bring um, depression, suicidal issues, loss and grief. Um. So if somebody is dealing with one of these issues mm -hmm. and they call your office, you'll be able to do what? We'll be able to direct them to resources, but we'll also we ask them to go to our website. Really, that is our office. It's mm -hmm. um, on our website. There's hundreds of articles on topics that you can easily just search. Let's say depression, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you'll have a variety of articles come up from a variety of professionals, part of our network and mm -hmm. our association. Mm -hmm. We have our videos. We tape 90% of our programs, so you can watch that in the comfort of your home. If there you feel like I can't go to that kind of a program, be with others maybe who might recognize me or just I'm not comfortable. Mm -hmm. I can mm -hmm. watch it in the privacy of my home mm -hmm. and it's on YouTube or it's on our website. Oh, very So good. you've got this research base and I can download profiles if I want to learn more about Jill or Suzanne. We can download their association profiles. What is their contact information? I can email them confidentially. Behind the family center, no one needs to know that they're even communicating. So it protects that privacy and confidentiality. Um, and I always tell people like we're the compass. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to help you find direction. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to tell you this is the one for you, but these are a variety of professionals that you can contact. And you can see that comfort zone come. It's like, I'm exhausted from even dealing with this mentally. Mm -hmm. Now you've given me some resources to go forward with. How do you vet the resources? Um, well, they're through other association members. We spend time with them. Um, we have them do programs with us. We have mm -hmm. them write articles with us. Mm -hmm. We do 52 articles in the Gross Point News. Uh, we've been there over 10 years as a partner with the Gross Point News. Mm -hmm. And so, um, again, when we vet them, we're sh we showcase what their talents are. And many of them are hidden gems within our community and beyond. Um, we have 82% of our traffic comes from the United States. We have 18% outside. We had over a million page views of our website last year. So it's really astounding to us the network potential that we yeah. have. Yeah. Um, people are sending links of videos to their sister in California or Seattle. Watch this with me. When we're dealing with our parents. Um, we can watch this video together. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it's, it, it's unlimited of really what we can do yeah, in families. Right. And every single thing about us is it's community contributions. Mm -hmm. We're a little nonprofit that's survived for 15 years because of the generosity of this community. Right, right. And our speakers give of their time and talent. Yeah. And your offices are? Our headquarters office, point? as we call it, is a small office in Barnes. We've been there in Barnes for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And it's really just a little operational office. We weave our programs throughout the community. So you may see us here at the Gross Point War Memorial in March. You may see us at Christ Church. You may see us at the academy, the public school system. Okay, yeah. very good. So you take the programming. We do. Yeah. To different audiences. Sure. So that way we can connect deeper within the community. Sure. And the, um, the community that benefits from you, even though you're headquartered in St. in, uh, excuse me, Gross Point, that not only for Gross Point. We have no boundaries. Residents. We actually have people coming from South Lyon, Marine City, depending on who the expert and the you know, program is about. So we have no boundaries. Good, good, good. Would you mind, Jill, telling us your story? Sure. So the, the five-minute version or three-minute version is uh, I was married uh, back in 1982, but in 1991, so nine years later, my husband uh, was diagnosed with double lung cancer and brain cancer. We had two small children, four years old and five years old at the time. And uh, he was given a life sentence of 12 months. So we were scrambling to uh, figure out, you know, life and death situations. And I usually say before I made my first meatloaf, I was trying to figure this out. So by no means was I in a position uh, with any medical knowledge to understand it. Um, make a long story short, Bob lived 21 years. So that life sentence of 12 ended up being 21, and albeit a miracle for sure, there were many, many, many years, um, consistent years of one issue after another. L uh, radiation, which he had quite a bit, deteriorated his brain. We had his skull removed, which set off a series of um, seizures and strokes. Bob had early onset dementia and uh, went to live in a memory care unit in 2004 
and but the 21 years of caring for Bob working full-time actually two jobs talk about financial responsibility exactly. just huge and raise a somewhat normal family and there's a lot of humor that comes in the caregiving oh, sure. survival story because yeah. when it's all said and done you know you do analyze in a humorous sure. way hopefully but um, anyway Bob passed away in 2012 and uh, but the the story of the survival of the family where you know you, you do anything you possibly can be somewhat normal although I did used to say to the kids if you want normal you should really visit the neighbors because <laughs> 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 normal doesn't live here right. um, but we have a great family uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, 1995 I thought I had cancer and I had self-diagnosed and I truly couldn't afford a doctor's um, uh, visit so that's why I self-diagnosed uh, and I really thought I was going down uh, I ended up being pregnant which is a miracle there's no way that Bob according to his doctors could have um, any more children and so we were blessed beyond with our third child oh who is now 20 <laughs> years old and uh, that kind of shifted the focus from death to life yeah there's a lot of great stories with that too so uh, in 2006, I authored personal positioning for the caregiver based on the experience with holding the family, finances, Bob, decisions, huge amount of stress. Uh, you hit bottom before you go anywhere. We did hit bottom financially and emotionally, but you rebound. That rebound story is the story. That's so wonderful. And again, the name of your book is? Uh, personal Positioning. For the caregiver. Okay, and that's what is um, really so well known throughout the community. Thank and you. Know, a lot of people have mentioned it. And mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so, well, I just want to thank all of you very much for coming on today, talking about what you do individually for seniors and uh, those in need in our community, as well as your contributions to the Family Center and this wonderful event that we're going to have. Um, in uh, in February is um, we've got about um, a minute left to talk about one or two other things that the Family sure. Center does you've got the meet and greets that mm -hmm. come up yeah we do we have actually a meet and greet coming up on February 11th okay. and that's going to be an Assumption Cultural Center we have okay. probably about 60 professionals who come and it's a great meeting because it's from 9:30 to noon we go around the room, everyone gets a brief few seconds to say what they do, and you can see the eyes and the connections already starting, like, I want to speak with you afterwards. And then there's this flurry of activity where they do get to exchange and share their materials and resources. And many times, practitioners are so busy with their day-to-day -day operations, there is not that time to network. So That's we have right. found these to be very valuable. And anyone's welcome. There's no fee to attend. And uh, Again, that's on your website. Yeah, it's on our website. Okay. It's called Meet and Greet for Professionals. Great. Well, thank you again very much, and we want to thank, thank, thank you viewers thank you. for tuning in. Once again, if you have ideas, uh, suggestions you'd like to see us uh, cover here on Aging Well in America, please send your ideas here to the Gross Point War Memorial. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.